So today we have a very interesting video. <laughs> we got a Young and Ace and Fulio, the most demonic rappers. This was not my video. The original video was made by Rap Daily if you want to check it out. So without further ado, let's get into it. The horrifying story of Young and Ace and Fulio involves kidnap, murder, getting kidnapped like a little baby, like a little boy. They found a bone. And even disrespecting Dead Ops graves. They tore up his grave, they spit on his grave, they urinated on his grave. These two leaders of the KTA and ATK gangs have earned the title Demon Rappers. The bodies in Jacksonville keep dropping and the rivalry intensifies. But the whole story involving the two rappers and their gangs is deep. By the way, I don't want to say too much because I feel like I hope that this video explains anything that I could or would possibly say. So I'm going to try not to... Uh, say too much right now but i will give my opinion throughout the video so uh, yeah More shocking than you could ever imagine atk versus kta to understand why young Geen aces atk and fulio's kta I, mean, I don't know why he keeps saying his name like young Geen. y'all correct me if i'm wrong but i'm pretty sure it's young and ace but whatever <laughs> it might be Young Geen. I don't know. Maybe I've been saying it wrong the whole time. Dangerous gangs in Jacksonville look no further than some of their senseless murders. And to start us off, we have KTA's murder of Corbin Odell Johnson. On July 11, 2018, the vibrant 18-year-old FaceTimed his friends at 4 in the afternoon. Little did they know, this would be the last time they would see Corbin alive. Corbin had told his friends he was at Amazon for a job interview and was awaiting a ride. His father, Corey Mormon, recounted dropping his son off for another job interview with UPS at 5 in the afternoon, only to pick him up 45 minutes later. He later drove Corbin to his mother's residence on Biscayne Bay Circle at 8 in the evening. His mother... Wait, is that his, that's his actual house? Dang. Mormon Jackson would later report that the last time she saw her son was at 9.30 that night. The clock ticked on, and the following morning at 8.45, Corey sent a text message to his son, which would go unanswered, setting off alarm bells in his father's heart. By 6.30 in the evening on July 13th, the family's concern had escalated to action, and they officially reported Corbin missing. The Jacksonville Sheriff's Office began their investigation, but never made any progress. Days turned into weeks, weeks into months, and months into a year of agonizing uncertainty. As the first anniversary of Corbin's disappearance approached, the family planned a memorial at Riverside's Memorial Park. But fate had written a different ending to Corbin's story. On the evening of July 11, 2019, a man clearing land off Utsi Road made a shocking discovery. Corbin's skeleton was found, wrapped and buried, bringing a tragic end to the search. KTA's head honcho, Fulio, was all up on Instagram making fun of Corbin after the discovery was made. And Corbin, they let Corbin get kidnapped, man. That's crazy, man. Got this stupid ass kid out. They found a bones. Get kidnapped like a little baby, like a little boy. If you're wondering why he would go online and make fun of such a sad incident, that's exactly what I'm wondering. Why? Like, why? What is going on? Look a few months back when one of their own was brutally murdered and his death mm. locked by ATK. In the what Shout out to the ads. Shout out to the One ads. One mini AI written ebook onto Amazon that could replace your in. In the heart of Jacksonville, 16-year-old Adrian Gaynor Jr., alias Bibby, a student at Grand Park High School, met a distressing fate in an incident that left the city grappling with questions and a family in profound grief. The sudden and violent loss of this young life, cut short in the parking lot of his friend's residence, sparked an outcry for justice. The death hurt Fulio so much that he released a song in his honor. On February 25th, 2019, at the Hilltop Village Apartments parking lot on West 45th Street, Bibby was found lifeless, the victim of multiple gunshot wounds. The area around the gazebo, where he had been spending time, was littered with dozens of shell casings from a rifle, tracing the path of his desperate attempt to escape what? his assailant. Witnesses reported the teenager being chased. Yo, I'm gonna be real. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to finish this. I just started. I'm not laughing at the video, bro. I'm laughing at myself. Like, man, what am I watching right now? This is, I can see. I, I Now I see where this video is going. Am I gonna call them the most demonic rappers? Y'all have y'all own opinions, bro. You know what I'm saying? But uh, this is already off to a crazy start. You know? It's just unfortunate. And uh, these brothers that's in this video is, was super young when they, uh, unfortunately, 
was cut short, you know. I mean, we all gotta go, but it's 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 not to me. It's not it's not about why or what. It's about how. So it's just how they went. So they saw Bibby fall and was struck by bullets as he tried to shield his head with his hands in a futile effort to protect himself. According to the arrest warrant, it was Hakeem Robinson, alias K. So, an ATK affiliate, who, in a cold-blooded act, approached Bibby and shot him at close range in the back of the head. Even as the young teen continued to try to defend himself, the arrest warrant also revealed that K. So had taken to social media after Bibby's death, posting several photos and videos where he appeared to be bragging about Bibby's murder. This brazen display of disregard for human life added another layer of horror to the case and further inflamed the community's grief and anger. And it seems Queso and his gang did more than brag about their hit on Bibby. As it turns out, they went as far as to disrespect his grave and dissed his relatives every chance they got. They tore up his grave, they spit on his grave, they urinated. Are these, they, they what? On his what? Grave, they made fun of our rap or whatever, they made fun of us marching, they mocked us every chance that they got. Both ATK and KTA have committed hate. And that's what that's something I was going to say, like, when you do stuff like that, it's, you're not really um, going at the person that, that uh, is in the grave, but you, I mean, you are, but at the same time, it's more so for the people that's still alive that you're going at. I hope people really understand that. Um, and most people do, because like she said, they, they really mocked them so you know um take it how you want it though take it how you want it it's just a messed up situation all the way around and their leaders, Fulio and Young Gene Ace, are nothing short of monsters. So what are the gang's origins, and why are they beefing so viciously? Before the streets of Jacksonville echoed with the notoriety of the ATK gang, there was the Ying Gang. It was within this environment that a young rapper, Young Gene Ace, began to make a name for himself. Not just with his music, but as a figure of emerging influence in the gang landscape. With a microphone in one hand and the reins of leadership in the other, Ace's ascent in the rap industry paralleled his climb within the gang hierarchy. His lyrics a raw reflection of life on the streets became anthems that resonated with the youth, earning him not just fans but also loyalty among the ranks. As Young Gene Ace's influence grew, his interactions with the gangs on the east side of Jacksonville intensified. It was a time of strategic alliances and shrewd negotiations. Ace, with his charisma and street credibility, bridged the divide between the west and east, weaving a network of loyalty and control that spanned the entire city. The ATK gang, which stands for Aim to Kill, became a force that commanded attention and and respect as the ATK gang. Is that really what ATK stand for? So what does KTA stand for? Kill the aim? I don't know. No, I don't know. I don't even know if that's what ATK stand for. People probably don't even know what either one of those stand for, honestly. But anyway. its grip on Jacksonville, a rival entity was rising in the shadows. The KTA gang, an acronym that sent shivers down the spine of the city with its chilling implication, kill them all, was on the ride. Now, I was just saying, like, people might not even know what this is. I mean, is this really what it mean? You know, if you're a part of it, I, you, you ain't got to answer in the conversation at all. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's crazy. It's crazy. Genesis of KTA was rooted in the remnants of the notorious PCE gang, which had once sown chaos across the city. The PCE had been crippled by the law, with its top 10 members falling into the hands of justice, charged with murder and firearm offenses. This left a void that was quickly filled by those who remained, hungry for leadership and direction. Enter Charles Jones, or as the streets knew him, Fulio. His life was a chronicle of the violence that plagued the city, having witnessed the loss of numerous friends to the endless cycle of gun violence. These Wait a minute, what is this? Oh, are, new music is, are these music videos or is this like from from hits like this is looking real federal I don't know what's going on in this video but it's a lot of clips in here that's real questionable this didn't just shape Folio, they hardened him, creating a leader both feared and respected. With the remnants of PCE rallying behind him, Folio orchestrated a takeover of the North and South territories, asserting control with a mix of strategic alliances and sheer force. KTA's influence grew, and with it, a new power dynamic took shape. The city was now a chessboard, with ATK and KTA as its principal players, each commanding their halves with an iron fist. The emergence of KTA under Folio's command set the stage for an inevitable confrontation. The 
city was now divided, with ATK holding the east and west, and KTA claiming the north and south. Tension simmered as both gangs fortified their positions. And the Is it really that simple, though? I feel like it's deeper than that. That's just my opinion. I don't know. I don't know. In the per Rap Daily, how did you get this information? We, I got, I got, I have a lot of questions. How did you get the, all this information? How do you know who's running this territory and who's running that territory and what this acronym mean? Without Google search, are you actually what's what's going on? of Jacksonville became the backdrop for a burgeoning war. The primary reason for the ATK versus KTA feud was likely an instance of disrespect between the two gangs dating back years. The incident occurred during a rap concert in November 2015 where members from both gangs were present. Despite the tension between the groups, they attempted to form a truce by shaking hands. How However, do you know One this? member refused, leading to a fist fight and ultimately a series of retaliatory shootings. And that's when the first publicized murder took place, the murder of Zion Brown. Murder rap. Zion Brown was active in the streets and was rapper Fulio's blood cousin. Their ops decided to take things too far and attack Brown's home. It was around 1.30 in the morning when the family's backsliding door was broken by a brick. Inside the house, Brown's 16-year-old sister was jolted awake by the noise. She did what any frightened person would do in such dire circumstances. She called 911, desperate for help. But before the reassuring presence of law enforcement could arrive, the situation escalated. A figure emerged from the darkness, stepping through the remnants of the glass door the gunman with bro look at these clips there's no way this is the actual footage bro this is the actual footage of the crime i feel like i've seen this clip before crazy enough a few years ago but is this who it actually was in this clip that's crazy coldness made his way into the kitchen and then into the living room. The space, which had been filled with the soft breathing of sleeping children, was now a stage for a horrific act. The teenage girl, along with her nine-year-old cousin and her brother, Zion Brown, gathered in the living room, their hearts pounding with fear. The gunman looked upon the innocent faces of the children. Bro, and what is this? What is this? remorse. His finger tightened around the trigger and a series of shots rang out, each one a piercing echo of terror. The 16-year-old girl tried to take cover behind a couch, but the bullets found her, striking both of her legs. Her young cousin was hit in the neck and right arm, the pain unimaginable for someone so young. And Zion Brown was fatally wounded. As the gunman's weapon clicked empty, he turned and walked out the same way he came in, leaving behind a scene of devastation. As the community of Jacksonville Cedar Hills... Bruh. Like I <laughs> it's awoke to the aftermath of the tragedy. The Jacksonville Sheriff's Office was already deep into the investigation of the triple shooting that had claimed the life of Zion Brown and injured two young girls. The detectives were determined to piece together the events that led to the senseless violence and to bring the perpetrator to justice. The investigation took a significant turn when the wounded 16-year-old girl, still grappling with the trauma and the bullets lodged in her body, provided a crucial piece of information. She knew the shooter, not just a face in the crowd, but someone she recognized as a Facebook friend and the boyfriend of one of her friends. This revelation steered the detectives in a new direction and the name DeAndre Thomas surfaced as the prime suspect, a man with close ties to Fulio's main op, Youngin Ace. DeAndre Thomas, a 19-year-old student from Orange Park High School, was no stranger to the law. His past was filled with a series of arrests in Clay County, including drug possession and a string of burglaries, one of which involved the theft of a firearm. In fact, DeAndre and Young... Look at this. Look at this. Bruh, if this is live footage, I mean, not live footage, but if this is like real footage of the actual stuff that was going down, and I'm assuming that it's not, you know, uh, how, I mean, I understand how he got all of this, but at the same time, some of this stuff might not have been released. It's looking real... If y'all want me to finish this, let me know in the comment. Like I always ask y'all, y'all know I got you if you want me to finish this. But unfortunately, uh, this is going to be part one. That's what I'm going to say. Just in case y'all want me to finish this. Because me right now, I, I can't finish this right now. This is just too, it's too, it's looking too much. <sighs> these are like, if these are, y'all got to let me know first. Is this real footage? Like, is this, is, I mean, it's footage from somewhere. But are these the actual crimes being committed? Man, I, I ain't. Listen, I can't sit here and watch this. That's just what it is. 
Um, like I said, again, I'm laughing at myself. But if this is the real footage of these crimes, if this, let me say this. If this is not the real footage, but you painting the narrative that it is the real footage, uh, it kind of like lose, made me lose, it kind of just lose its value. You know what I'm saying? Um, in my opinion. And I understand some people just put clips over uh, random stuff during uh, videos, but this video is a little bit more serious. We talking about some real stuff in this video. So unless these are actual clips, I just can't, I can't sit here and react to it. But if you want me to finish it, y'all got to let me know in the comment section. Uh, um, I don't usually get that many likes on video, but if this video get 100 likes, uh, or if it just get 20 people saying that they want me to do a part two, then I'll do it. Uh, so let me know what y'all think in the comments is below. Like I said, uh, uh, my opinion is all of it is just very unfortunate, but that's the life that they live. Um, man, just got to pray for mercy and grace and repentance to just change this, man. But like I was saying, Man, I'm still just like I'm still like, I'm looking at this is on my screen. I'm just like, man, this is crazy. If these are the real the real clips from these crimes, y'all gotta let me know something.